But let's start with the first one since I just mentioned it. Kids, right? Everybody agrees getting kids is the most important thing we can do to go to sports. You have to agree that, right? It's, it's the next group of us. If we don't pass it on, we just die away and it's gone, right? So in, influencing kids is one of them. Our family, friends, and peers, I mentioned that one a little bit already. That's another one. Who has a family member that does a fish? Raise their hand. Oh, I do. Old Uncle Tony. Old Uncle Tony from South Philadelphia. Yo, Mike, yo, why you throw that rod like that, huh? We all have a relative that doesn't fish, a friend, a peer, want to influence them. Co-workers, right? Your boss, people you work with, employees. Um, the media, the media. Specifically, non-fishing media, non-endemic media. So important. To, to, to influence them, to change their mind, right? If I see another mainstream media outlet grab a fishing rod and hold the spinning reel upside down, I'm gonna flip out. <laughs> you think kicking the Lorraine shooting itself from my boat was bad? Look at the size of that monitor right there. I'll kick that thing or this one. Um, mainstream media is powerful. If we can influence them and show them why we love what we love, why the passion behind the sport, they'll change. They'll change their mind and they'll influence other people. And the last one, if you were down in the luncheon, was a great uh, presentation on, on Asian car. The last one is local, state, federal politicians, right? Whether you love politics or you hate politics, doesn't matter. But we all have the responsibility to influence uh, politicians, right? Um, it, it was a great lunch because what I heard from him is exactly what we need to do, which is make our voices heard, right? So, so we need to influence them as well. All right, so we've got, we've got a passion, we've got a brand, we know we know who we want to influence, and now we're going to talk about how to do it, how to, how to actually grow the sport. And on this one, I'm going to blow through the first four or so, and then I'm going to settle in on the last two because of today's age, today's time. It's 2020. Isn't that unbelievable? I, I, it's so weird saying it. It's 2020. And 2020 is a little different than the 90s, the 80s, right? Times change. So we're going to focus on the last two. Um, but let's, let's, let's start with how we're going to do it. Talking about the media. How many people already work with media outlets? Raise their hand. A lot of you, about half, half of the room. It's so important to establish contacts with your local media. That's the it's so easy to do because they're starving for good stuff anyway. My market's the Philadelphia market, right? So I get all the Philly uh, news channels, 3, 6, and 10. The hour-long news show is all murders. <laughs> yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> it's true, yeah. It, it's true. drugs. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. So when you go to them with something that you're passionate about, and you pitch them this storyline, and there's this sport that's happening here that you don't know about. It's unbelievable. It's so amazing. Dude, they'll listen. They'll listen. So not just local media, but national media, right? To grow the sport, we need to target the media. Establish contacts. Get names. Shake hands, you know. Next one is, uh, is appearances. We've got, I'm sure in this room, we've got, we've got bass pros, walleye pros, guides, reps, sales guys. We've got every walk of life in this room, uh, in this room right now. 
How many people have done store appearances or do store appearances? Super important. It's super important. Before all this madness started, I worked at Dick's Sporting Goods, store number 83, Mount Laurel, New Jersey. I was the lead in the lodge, the fishing lead. Let me add, because I hated selling paintball. <laughs> That's my title, fishing lead. Uh, I had more of an effect working at that store on influencing people and changing the sport than you could ever imagine. So showing up at stores is, is key. Um, shows are a big one, right? This, this show right now, this conference is great. It's networking. We're, we're having a positive effect on each other. But not just fishing and hunting shows. All of them. Camping shows. Auto shows. People are influenced at shows. They get excited. They want to talk. Keep doing it. Keep going, to, keep going to sports shows. One more, and then I'm going to slow down the last two, and then I'm going to stop because I can tell they're kicking me out because they already changed the screen. <laughs> Very good sign. <laughs> you know, at the Oscars, they start playing the music. Here, they just change the screen on you. I see you guys back there. I see you rap guys. Can we stop that? Um, <laughs> I forgot what I was going to talk about now. Uh, Fishing tournaments is another great one on influencing people. And not necessarily just the tournaments you fish, but at tournaments. And one of the big things that I've done right in my career on influencing people is to stay around and talk. Talk to the other fishermen. Talk to the fans. Talk to people that are just jogging by and say, what's this jumbotron? Bystanders, talk to them and spread that word. It's easy. It's easy to talk about it when you love it. It's what you do. Just talk about it. So easy. But now let's, let's focus on these last two, which in 2020, this is the payoff now. These are the two biggest things you can do to change the sport. And the first one is digital content. Digital content. Show of hands, how many people are engaged in digital content right now? It's awesome. More than half of the room. And digital content can be a lot of things. It can be video audio, podcasting, content. And it's so easy to create content. How many people have a phone? Minus Ron Linder and John Morris, we've all got phones. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Morris actually doesn't have a phone. He doesn't. It's unbelievable. Um, <clears throat> We all have phones. We can create digital content with our phone, with a GoPro. It's so easy. And digital content in 2020 is the answer. If you're working at a retail shop, or you're repping a company, or you're a full-time guy, or you're a walleye pro, or a bass pro, or you aspire to have a show like Bill Dance one day, Digital content is where it's at. And it's so easy to create it, and it's mostly free, right? How much does it cost to create a YouTube channel? How much? Zero. Zero. How much does it cost to uh, create an Instagram or Twitter or YouTube account? Zero. Zero. It's mainly free. And people in 2020, especially the folks we're trying to target, right? Not the people that already fish, but the people we're trying to target. Younger people, people in mainstream America that don't fish, your Uncle Vinny, yo. They're influenced by digital content. There's nothing like seeing passion with your own eyes, right? What do you fish for? 
There's a video of you catching a giant walleye, this battle, and you netting it, and it's a giant. It's, a, it's in a tournament. It's, it doesn't matter. Dude, it's a giant. Dude, that video, people can't get their eyes off of it. They can't get their eyes off of it. My, my grandmother, God rest her soul, Edith, uh, she used to watch the X Games. I would come in to her house and be like, Grandma! I'd look and she's on the couch watching the X Games. She watched skateboarders and motocross. I could never figure it out. What? What? Finally, I said, Grandma, why are you watching that? She's like, I love the energy. I can't stop watching it. The excitement. And that's the power of digital content. And it's mainly free. That's the way we're going to influence people. And the last one is a little bit of a subset, which is social media, right? Social media is like politics. Yeah. <laughs> there's, good, yeah. there's good parts and there's bad parts to it. Um, but aside from that, as a way to change and grow the sport of fishing, as a way to build your personal brand, as a way to sell more stuff, as a way to get more guide clients, is there any better effective form in 2020 than social media? There's no. not. There's not. Let me flip this one. Say, let, instead of a show of hands, who has a social media account? Who does not have at least one social media account? Raise your hand. Come on, I'm putting myself on the spot. Nobody. That's awesome. Yes, everyone has at least one. Um, it is the most powerful tool to affect with an A, effect with an E, and infect with an I, people. To influence people. It's the most powerful tool we have, and it's absolutely free. There's no charge to it. The only thing you have to do is be yourself. Show your passion. Show your brand, which is you. It's you. Be authentic. Be real. People see it. People see it. You've got logos on your shirt, and you're in your contract, you're going to be required to make a couple posts for Fenwick, post or two a month. And I get that. I do too. I have, I have a lot of those contracts. But be authentic. Bring that post into who you are, your brand, your passion. People will gravitate toward those posts. I've seen it, it's great, I watch my social media, and when we post something that's very canned, occasionally we do, there's no traction. You'll get a couple hundred likes, a thousand likes, 15 comments, it's okay. But we post something that ties it into who I am, and my brand, and what I really do, right? My brand pillars, my passion, when it ties into that, dude, it goes bonkers. 5,000, 10,000, 100,000 views, 1,000 comments. And they're, they're the posts that influence people, right? They influence people. And they influence people to grow the sport. It's, it's the most important thing we have at our disposal. Um, let me leave you with this. Don't be scared to, to be who you are. Don't be scared to, to show your personality. If you're excited and you yell, do that. If you're quiet and reserved, do that. If you're nerdy and geeky like me, I collect Cabbage Patch dolls and ink bottles. It's okay. 